I'm Mark Kepler with Purdue University Extension Service and I'm going to take an opportunity today to talk about a couple of things and one of the things I want to talk about is invasive species. And we talk about how things have come to the United States and to the North American continent from other locations throughout the world and how some of our native things have been uh, pushed out of the way by these invasive species that come in. There's a lot of species that have been brought to this country that aren't native. And one of the things I bring up right off the bat are things like cats, dogs, cattle, pigs. These are things that are not native to this continent that have been brought in and we've been able to domesticate them and utilize them to our best of our advantages. But reality is too, there are other things that have come in here that have spread and caused some problems. And one of those things is right behind me in this pond area, and it's a weed we call Phragmites. Now, most of us don't even realize it's out there and it exists. And that's because of the fact we have, uh, native to our country, something we have con called common reed. And this is very much uh, identical to common reed. In fact, they are the same species, but this I would look at as a, just a different variety. It's kind of like looking at an apple tree, and you have apple trees, but you have different varieties. You may have a Granny Smith or a Jonathan. Well, in this situation, this common reed has a European variety that has come into our country, and this European variety is one that's very aggressive, especially in our wetland areas. And so we're standing out here right next to uh, uh, a location right off the road uh, from Olson Road here, and we're taking a look at some ponds that have this weed starting to grow up around it. Most people don't even realize it's happening, and then all of a sudden they start seeing it out here. And this is Phragmites. And <clears throat> Phragmites, what it does is it grows from rhizomes or tuberous roots underground, and it comes up and it starts growing, and it gets to be, oh, probably around 12 foot tall. It can even get that 10 to 12 foot tall. And it dies down in the wintertime, then it comes back up in the springtime. And what it ends up doing is growing in this area, and it'll eventually encircle a wetland area. <clears throat> so like in this pond situation, it's not going to get out into the pond. But if we have an area that's a wetland where it stays wet part of the time and part of the time it's dry, Phragmites can take over that wetland area. In the process of taking over that wetland area, it shoves out all the native vegetation. It's extremely effective in that. And because you can see the thickness that this plant has. And by shoving out all that native vegetation, it also shoves out some of the potential animals that might be utilizing that native vegetation to exist and to live. And that's one of the biggest problems with invasive species. Not only do we lose out uh, where they come in and they, they come in, they shove out other things that we're really worried about in our area and we lose our native products. Now one of the things that we have <clears throat> talked about in our area in wetlands is something called purple loosestrife. Beautiful flower comes up, it's purple in color. And it has come into our wetlands and started shoving things out. Well, as you can see, this, this Phragmites is even more effective at doing that. And the fact is it can shove out purple loosestrife and it causes a tremendous amount of problems uh, in our wetland areas. Well, what I've done is I've went and dug up a little bit of this Phragmites around this area. And one of the things it has is it has root systems that are very, very thick and very, very full. And what it does, it sends out little tubers we call rhizomes. So once a plant is established, these rhizomes go out and they push up another plant. And they go out and they push up another plant. And so by doing this, we end up having uh, a, just a, a mat of these different vegetations around our area. And so this is just an example of the root system of this Phragmites. Now in this location right behind me, the Phragmites has came out from this pond and the water is stopping it from going into the pond. It's just too, too thick there. But out into this lawn, we have mowed it off and there are small, very small Phragmites plants into this area. So even mowing this area cannot get rid of it. It, it is so aggressive and so uh, effective, it really does a tremendous job of coming into there. So what's an advantage of having this invasive species around? Well, if you got wildlife like blackbirds, 
Uh, they like to use it. They like to be seen in it. Uh, and so that if deer in wetland areas can be using it for shelter because they can use it in a location like that. One big advantage that people on a pond like this would see is we get Canada geese coming in. And Canada geese will fly in, land on the pond, and then if it's really nicely groomed around the pond, they'll walk off of that pond and they'll come up in the yard. And sometimes the population of Canada geese can be extremely thick, too thick. People don't want that many in their yards. So having this area like this, the Canada geese cannot get off the pond. They will not walk through that because they're scared that there could be something lurking in that that could try to eat them or kill them. And so because they are preyed upon, they are fearful of this area. So this pond would have a lower level of Canada geese around it. And that's really one of the advantages or disadvantages, depending on how you look at Canada geese. But the population can be tremendously thick, and that's what we can be looking at in, in these situations. So now let's talk about control. And we're going to try to figure out how to take care of this. I already said that mowing it off just isn't going to do it. We can't mow it off, and obviously what's out there in the water can't be mowed off. Uh, that's, a, that's a tremendously hard job to do that. So I've got some of this plant in front of me right now, and I'm going to take a look at it. The leaves on Phragmites are very stiff and very slick, like, like a lot of other aquatic plants. And so one of our options for this is to spray it with a chemical. And the chemical that we would use on this <clears throat> contains the active ingredient called glycosphate. We all know glycosphate when we use it as a product called Roundup. But in an aquatic environment, we don't like to use Roundup, but we can use the active ingredient that's found in Roundup, and, and it will work. The problem with Roundup is it has some problems not in aquatic areas and the fact that, uh, for one thing, it doesn't stick to this, this slick surface as well. Plus, the carriers in it will have some product problems with the fish and the wildlife. So because of that, we go to aquatic versions of Roundup. And they can be found locally in some of our stores in the sections that are required or the sections that are into aquatic plants. There's a lot of different aquatic weed killers, and we would use the aquatic version of Roundup with the active ingredient glycosphate in it. And so go to your local stores and ask for aquatic versions of Roundup. What we would do is we could spray that Roundup on there right now, and it really kills everything it comes in contact with. The great news about it is it has no soil activity. So it only kills green things that it comes in contact with, and other things can come back. Roundup translocates down into that plant, down into that root, and kills that root off. <clears throat> One application generally will not be enough. It'll take multiple applications before we can see it. So anytime, this time of year, we can do this the fall of the year before things start to turn brown because what you're seeing in our background with the seed heads of this Phragmites is left over from last year and that's the seed heads from last year. This year it's just a green plant coming up right now. So in the fall of the year uh, that is also very effective in killing because at that time the translocation is really done extremely well into the plant and so the kill is a lot better done in the fall of the year, say around October-ish, sometime around then. I just wanted to take an advance to take a look at the seed head on this. This is a seed head that was formed last year and so we'll be seeing another new seed head coming on later on this year. Um, and what has happened is this seed is fairly fluffy and so it can be spread very easily by wildlife and also by the winds that we have and so it does spread around. Once that seed hits the ground and starts to grow, we get a plant out of it. Then once that plant starts to come out the bottom with rhizomes, it really gets to form that thick mat around there. So this is a little bit about what we're looking at. <clears throat> In your community, there are a lot of different invasive species we're starting to see. Phragmites is just one of them and really is being seen in those wetland areas. And so you may want to see it early when it initially comes in to try to take some control of it. That's the real key to invasive species, identifying this, seeing what it is, and trying to kill it out at a young age before it gets too big and too large on you. This is just an example of what it can do. But if we look at some of the wetland areas where the water doesn't stop it, it can really get in and just totally invade that wetland area. And we can have a tremendous change in the amount of species, both native and non-native, that comes into that area. And in general situations with invasive species like this, it's a bad situation. And you really need to think about what you can do to stop it on your own property.